Hey there. You are watching the Jessa channel on YouTube. I'm Jessa. And today I am here with more infectious madness. We are working our way through Act 3, 42% progress. 42% madness <laughs> as the dark side of everyone in this game comes out, including our heroine, Dr. Leslie. <laughs> and we were interviewing, or I should say interviewing, I have interviewing on the mind. We were um, in an appointment with a quantum physicist in the last episode. So we're going to head back in and continue to talk to him. He is played by John Guylor, who I interviewed uh, recently. And that interview will be going up um, just after the final episode of this Let's Play. So whenever we get to that and we find out who the murderer is, one hour or two hours later, um, the interview will go up. And you'll be able to find out all of the cool behind the scenes. Uh, when we talk to Tim, John Dyler, Tim's the director, John. And also we got uh, Ashlyn in who is, um, who plays Marianne. So let's head in and find out more about the dark world of Dr. Leslie's office. Because the doctor is in midnight each day on valentine's night time as you know it freezes 20 minutes past 10. keep up doctor thinks we're gonna smother her in her sleep i'm a grave digger doctor i was at home david as my husband all on my lonesome stabbed him with a steak knife nothing changes i'm a qualified angel of death when i'm dancing you get this day over and over hilda i black out i don't think she's got long and laurie just naked on the beach hannah is that it for today David Hunt. I can change my skin. Then skins. Dr. Decker dated his patients. I had a hot date. He went out for drinks. I took photos of Jessica. Dr. Decker did phone on Valentine's Day. Ask me for Nathan's number. There was a girl there. Am I wrong to keep the locket? I'm allowed to talk to her, aren't I? He was preoccupied with finding photographs, patterns, rocking chair. I haven't been back to the beach since. I had a bit of a shaky loop incident. Where I find something. I set fire. Beautiful in the sea to hannah's clothes in the garden i dug the grave i wish i'd said goodbye dr decker cursed me it didn't weigh enough to have a body in it so creepy 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 <laughs> okay so this is john guyler that we see on stage on uh, stage on screen right now playing professor warwick and um, I've had a chance to interview him twice, once for Contradiction Spot the Liar and once for this game. And I hope to interview him again because we have a good old time. <laughs> I swear, it's awesome. Anyway, okay, so let's continue to talk to Professor Warwick. And um, let me head over here and take a look at some of his responses. If you remember, and I'm going to play this here even though I spelled it wrong. Thank you, Tim, for catching that, like having that spelling mistake to still work. Um, anyway, uh, quantum suicide is his whole deal. Dr. Leslie cradles a cup of uh, tea. She's just got some plain black tea. No sugar. And uh, she notices that Professor Warwick has brought his own flask, which he also has brought his own crystal goblet, like crystal decanter here, whatever this is, a uh, glass. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> anyway, um, and I did ask John about that in the interview, so you'll be happy to know that we talk about that class. Um, and also, I promised him, so I'm going to do this right ahead of time here. There is an Easter egg regarding contradiction, spot the liar, and here. So I'm going to try and find it before we head back into the role play. Dr. Leslie heads out to the bathroom, leaves uh, Dr. Uh, Warwick here, and let's see what he has to say when he's alone, <laughs> left alone in Dr. Leslie's office. Okay, uh, let's try Ryan Ran, because that's the character he played in Contradiction. What? Uh, I think you're confusing me with someone else. <laughs> uh, 
That was good. Okay. <laughs> they actually put that in there on purpose. I mean, obviously. It was John's idea uh, to put it in. Let's see if Jinx gets us anything. Maybe if you ask me that in a parallel universe, I actually know the answer. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> All right, so I guess that was our our little... Um, let's just try one more, just because I just want to see if they added anything else in here. Contradiction, Ryan ran. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I told him in the interview that I'd type in Jinx first, because that's the first thing I think of when I think of contradictions about the liar, Detective Jinx. But anyway, Ryan ran. <laughs> so there's your little... Um, Easter egg. Let's play it one more time for just for fun. What? Uh, I think you're confusing me with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that glass. I'm not going to ruin any more for you. If you have not yet watched the Contradiction Spot the Liar playlist, then as D Professor Warwick says, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Head on over, and I'll just leave you to see that whole glass and that whole fun thing that's added in there. All right, so let's go back to quantum suicide. Not suicide, suicide. Dr. Leslie walks into the room, and uh, Professor Warwick says, Oh, Dr. Leslie, I was just thinking about oh, alternate realities and different universes and quantum suicide. Dr. Leslie takes her pen and her well-worn pad flips to a new page thinking this man might need a lot of fresh notes and says please tell me again about this quantum suicide dr warwick quantum suicide is a is a thought experiment that tries to explain the many worlds theory uh, you're looking at me blankly i can see that you don't understand i i, I, I knew you wouldn't uh alternate universes essentially if I were to shoot myself, then in some alternate universe, I'd still be alive. Mm. Now imagine if I could actually choose that universe. I'm taking a product off a supermarket shelf. Well, I simply applied that logic to something different. I really like John's acting style. Um, quantum, so he said shoot, shoot myself. Do you, uh, so let's try shoot yourself. I'm, not aware of that. Or not. Okay, so um, alternate universes. Let's try that. We also, um, well, we, he already talked to us about Dr. Decker, so. I don't know. He's like the dumbest, most uninformed quantum physicist I've ever met. And I've met one. One. <laughs> It is true. I do know one quantum physicist. Um, okay, so, uh, well, we're not getting anywhere with this. <laughs> I'm going to listen to it one more time. And if we can't get it, uh, then I suppose we'll move on to our real clients. <laughs> quantum suicide is a, is a thought experiment that tries to explain the many worlds theory. Let's try thought experiment and many worlds theory. Thought experiment. Uh, many worlds. I don't really know what you're getting at. I don't know what you're getting at either, to be honest. <laughs> Dr. Leslie bites her lower lip, wondering if this man has even an ounce of sanity and what is his increasingly tiny brain. Let's try Quantum again. Quantum suicide is a, is a thought experiment that tries to explain the many worlds theory. Uh, you're looking at me blankly. I can see that you don't understand. I, 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 I knew you wouldn't. Uh, alternate universes. <laughs> Essentially, if I were to shoot myself, then in some alternate universe, I'd still be alive. Mm. Now imagine if I could actually choose that universe. I'm taking a product off a supermarket shelf. Well, I simply applied that logic to something different. Um, okay, so let, I think we already tried something different in the last episode. I don't recall, but let's see. Something different. Gambling. Oh, I, I see. I set up an experiment whereby I would visit a casino and place a very large bet at the roulette table. Now, I would always bet on odd. Now, the results of this particular experiment were mundane. I won as many times as you would expect according to the laws of probability. But then, I changed a parameter. All right, parameter. This is very uh, fascinating. Doctor, please continue. 
quantum suicide required a, a loss of life to make it a realistic thought experiment. So I simply upped the stakes. Now, every time I bet on odd, I would uh, place everything I had on that one spin of the wheel, and it worked for a while. For a while. That's what every gambler says. They have a lucky streak, I believe is what it is called, Professor. Dr. Decker killed it, and I can't get it back. How so did he kill it? Killed it? Are you sure that question's for me? Uh, let's try to get it back. Do you, know, you remind me of Dr. Decker. He always used to ask me questions I didn't know the answer to. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> Decker killed it. You, know, you remind me of Dr. Ah, okay, so let's play that again because I, I'm determined. Actually, you know what? Screw that. I'm going to put in a hint. What did Doc... Oh, what? See? I'm glad I... Every time I ask for a hint, every time, it's never like, oh, duh. It's always like, I never would have thought to ask it in that particular way. Um, Tim and Linda, the creators of this game, are very well aware of the limitations of this system. And one of the things that he mentioned in the interview was how in the next game, which they're already considering doing, so if you want to uh, support them and, and encourage them to create another amazing game like this, the best way you can do it is to go buy this game from Steam and leave a review. Um, but in any case, um, he mentioned that they're already working on a different way to do this because everything else about this game is perfection, except for this one little thing. So what did Dr. Decker kill? You mentioned that Dr. Decker killed it. What perchance did Dr. Decker kill? Could you elaborate, please, Professor Warwick? As she, uh, waits for Professor Warwick to consider his answer. She writes down on her pad, killed it. And then she draws a quick picture of Earth and smaller planets, the solar system. The planets whirling quickly around. Okay, she, she draws very quickly, all right? Let's just not ask. Anyway, what did Dr. Decker kill? Well, my theory, quantum gambling. If the stakes are high enough, you will win every time by simply shifting your consciousness into that branch that wins. It's tricky, but it can be done. <laughs> Dr. Decker didn't like that. He saw me becoming rich and powerful, and he hated that. And that's why he proffered the hangman's paradox. The hangman's paradox. I am familiar with this. What is your take on it? Well, uh, imagine a judge sentences you to death. Now, it will be Monday or Tuesday next week. But it will be a surprise. Well, which day do you think you'll be executed? I have found that with my luck, it would be a Tuesday because what else can happen on a Tuesday, really? It's really a rather dull day. Uh, well, it can't be Tuesday. Because if you're still alive on Monday at midnight, then you know you'll be executed on Tuesday, so it won't be a surprise. Conversely, it can't be Monday either, because, well, you'll be expecting it to be Monday by deduction. Hence, a paradox. Dr. Decker tricked me. I like that shadowing that that happened. I don't know if that was done on purpose with the lights or not, but that whole thing with that one eye, that was really good. Uh... One more hint. I just want to see what else he has to say. Oh. So you say Dr. Decker hated him, hated you becoming rich and powerful. I imagine that, like every therapist, such as myself, we want success for our clients. And I can't see how being rich and powerful would land you on a therapist's couch. Well, not directly. Uh, Decker, let's try, we can just use keywords, Decker, hate, rich, 
powerful. Let's try that. Honestly? Well, I think he feared quantum physics. He didn't like things being explained in terms of science. Almost as if he'd have preferred chaos. Dr. Leslie's takes a moment to smooth down her skirt. She has, um, she usually wears her tweeds. Today she's wearing something that's just a sort of thick woolen, brown, shapeless sort of thing. You say that Dr. Decker preferred chaos. Well, as a physicist, you would know that the universe moves from order to chaos. And that is the end of all. From supreme order to ultimate chaos. I don't know. <laughs> this is so unintentionally amusing. Uh, uh, let's try Decker and chaos. <laughs> I'm not aware of that. <laughs> okay. All right. We've spent a lot of time on him, so this is not an exclamation point, no matter how much it looks like one. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to move on past <laughs> Doctor. Uh, but if we continue on with him, well, you know what? Let's just, I'll move on. So one of the things that we need to do is to ask Jaya about Scarlet. And... That was given to me as a tip by one of you wonderful people in the uh, comments. Jaya walks into the office and Dr. Uh, Leslie, after seeing Dr. Warwick out, Dr. Leslie says, Jaya, do you know anything about a scarlet? That's not something I know about. Jaya conf shows complete confusion. So let's go over to our notes Claire killed David. Now, you remember in the first, uh, I think it was the first act, uh, Claire made a, for a slip. She slipped and said that David died when she was, you know, so that was pretty good. Um, what happened, ask, what happened with Ben? Ask patients about the paper spike. Too much to do today. All right, so let's start with Ben. I think that's all settled now. We are agreeing to pay Ben £5,000 and he's agreeing not to say anything about what he saw. Did he give any details about what he saw besides the, the body? He thought he saw... a creature... coming out of Dr Decker's mouth. But... at least that's the reason he's given for not emptying the bins that night. Either way, it's not the kind of publicity that we need. Shiny, happy, sane people. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, if you could only see my face right now. <laughs> my mouth just dropped open. <laughs> this game is... So good and so creepy, <laughs> but uh, I'm enjoying it immensely. Um, you'll know on the channel that I actually do not like creepy things or um, horror games, things like that. But this is like the right kind of creepy. It's interesting. It's intellectually creepy, if you understand what I mean there. Uh, so he saw a creature. You mean like like some sort of sea creature or, or some sort of ghost or phantasm? No. That's not it. Uh, did he say... Did I already type that in? Let's see. What did I type? He thought he saw... a creature... coming out of Dr. Decker's mouth. But at least that's the... Okay, there's nothing else to ask there. So if we ask creature, there's nothing else. Okay. Um, I love it how Jay, even Jaya comes to work without shoes on. <laughs> if you want to know why the actors, so many of the actors do not have shoes, you'll have to watch the interview, as that is a question I asked him. Okay, uh, well, what else do we need to ask her? Claire killed David, Bryce buried David, a paper spike? 
Oh, that's what he was killed with. Yes. A paper spike. Was the paper spike that Dr. Decker was murdered with, was it yours? It's in that police report that I gave to you. You should really take a look at it. All right, let's see. Crime scene report. Dr. Leslie takes a look at her report. The victim was located in his office, seated on a chair behind the desk, soaked in blood with an obvious chest wound. Jaya nods. Read on, she says. Dr. Leslie continues. The paper spike, it was a desk accessory, 150 millimeters long, protruding from the approximate region of the victim's heart. The time of death was between 8.30 and 10.30 p.m. Note that the victim's body was reportedly discovered at 10.20 p.m. on Valentine's Day. Exsanguination due to punctuation of the left anterior descending coronary. Dr. Leslie puts the uh, paper down on the little table which sits to her left-hand side. She picks up her teacup, takes a long sip. And says to Jaya, let's ask about Claire. You're overthinking things. You don't need to ask me that. <laughs> All right. Claire killed David. Let's try that one. Claire killed David. I don't know everything. I know most. <laughs> I am striking out in this episode. Oh my gosh. Um, all right, so let's move on to another patient. We will see Bryce next. So uh, Bryce is... For some reason, I get Bryce and Nathan mixed up. Nathan is played by Dom Lister, and Bryce is played by... Oh. Hold on a second. <laughs> I feel so bad because I've actually talked to him on Twitter. His uh played by Bryce is played by Melon Thomas. Sorry, Melon, if you're watching. <laughs> um, it amazes me because some of the actors have said that they have come along and seen the channel and watched some of the content. Tim's watched some of the content, so that's always really thrilling. Um, let's head in now to Bryce and ask him. Let's just hit him with the hard questions right at the top of his session. Um, Bryce, you buried David? Don't know. Or not. <laughs> Let's try buried David. I'm actually a classically trained pallbearer. There are a lot of health and safety considerations. Not everybody can do it. Well, properly at least. Occasionally I step in if the funeral director is short-shouldered. I do remember her face. She wasn't upset in the usual way. She seemed agitated. Her husband must have been a giant. The coffin was so heavy. I remember because aft port side sprained his ankle. That and he wasn't lifting correctly. Ah, who knew there was so much to do? <laughs> Speaking of which, doctor, uh, <laughs> the doctor suggests uh, that she can give him a, a prescription for... Uh, a little bit of pain medication if he should like it. Just a little. A couple of pills. Nothing addicting. Uh, let's ask about Claire. No. You have an interesting aura, Doctor. Okay, you keep your eyes off my aura. <laughs> let's stay focused on you, Bryce. Not my aura. Or anyone standing behind me. Or anything else. Um... Tell me about the paper spike. Dr. Decker frequently used that paper spike on his desk as an example. I'm sure he did it with the other patients too. He'd make me look at it, touch the point to see how sharp it was. He'd tell me that because I think it's sharp, it will hurt me. But if I thought it was nothing, it could pass right through my hand. <laughs> I think everybody went to, to creepy school and graduated first in their class. <laughs> uh, 
let's ask him about Henley Church. I'm just curious. That's where um, David was buried. I put my hand through a rusty nail at work today. It hurt like hell and bled like I'd been shot. I closed my eyes and thought, this isn't happening. The nail is just a worm and it will wriggle through me. When I looked back, can you guess what I saw? Uh, I don't think that's an actual question uh, because it was not uh, bolded. No. Let's try no guess. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh, let's try what did you see? In simple terms, I've got nothing to say. Crap. I hate that when I can't figure out exactly how the question's supposed to be asked. Oh, I forgot to say hello again. How are you? <laughs> hello, Doctor. I've been thinking about our last session, and I just wanted you to know that I'm not a bad person. I, I know taking naked photographs is wrong, but you don't know what it's like until you face the same temptation. I'm assuming you don't know what it's like. Do you have an extra hour, Doctor? Dr. Leslie coughs suddenly. <clears throat> I, um, no, I don't have an extra hour. Thank God for that. There's someone else in my hour, a hooded figure, watching me and following me. I followed it too. Tell me more about this hooded figure, please, Bryce. I don't know who it is. My initial thought was that it was you, that I told you about my affliction and, and somehow you'd got it too. Now I think maybe it's the military or some organization that wants to use the hour themselves. Maybe it's Dr. Decker risen from the dead. I need to talk to you about him. Please tell me about Dr. Decker, but I encourage you to keep your thoughts on reality. Making up maybes and should-haves and what-haves will make you feel unbalanced. I spied on Dr. Decker not long before he was murdered. I'm not sure I should tell you what I saw in his basement. If you have any information to share about his murder, well... I think it isn't your civic duty to do so. I've been feeling uneasy with Dr. Decker for some time. I mentioned how he'd changed before. So I began spying on him at home. One night, the basement door was open and Decker was returning upstairs. I skipped past him and there she was, a girl. It was difficult to tell, it, it was dark and she was chained. What girl? Young? Old? That means nothing to me. Yes, Vienna. <laughs> uh, let's, let's back up there for a minute. Responses. Basement. Oh my gosh. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Uh, a girl? I don't know what you're getting at. I'm, he said a girl. I've been I'm... feeling uneasy <laughs> with Dr. Decker for some time. I mentioned how he'd changed before. So I began spying on him at home. One night, the basement door was open and Decker was returning upstairs. I skipped past him and there she was, a girl. It was difficult to tell, it, it was dark and she was chained. Girl is definitely in there, so I know I'm not losing my marbles. Dr. Leslie is, but I'm not. She was chained, this girl. No, sorry. Oh, for flippin' heck's sake. <laughs> eh. How would I have... Girl and chain... Let's try chained girl. I removed the chains, dressed her, and sat her in the police station. There's no evidence, though. No evidence of what he'd done. But she was free. I saved her. I'm not evil. I destroyed evil. Woo! Hello. 
Bryce says he took the girl in Dr. and Decker's basement to a police station. I have a feeling if I say, well, I just want to know who the girl is. Let's try who and girl. I've nothing interesting to say about that. His session is coming to a close. Uh, and Dr. Leslie is feeling a slow headache slide up from her cheekbone, her right cheekbone, past her right eye and up into her temple. I don't need another migraine at this point, she thinks to herself. I thought those had been cured. I thought I had been cured. By the way, I'm curious. <laughs> what do you think Dr. Leslie's first name is? I have a name in my head, but if you guys come up with one that's better, <laughs> we'll use it. Okay, so uh, there's one more thing. Hooded figure, something there. Oh, military. You mentioned earlier something about the military in regards to this uh, hooded figure. I'm surprised I haven't been approached earlier. I mean, my skills in the military. Special ops would be a breeze, wouldn't it? Waltz in past everyone during the midnight hour. Get whatever you want and return to friendly soil. It also makes me think that they might already know all of that and that they want to get rid of me in case I tell anyone else. Would you do something for me if, if they get me? Certainly, Bryce. Within the bounds of my professional ethics and the oaths I've taken, yes. Uh, yes. Do something. So I just type in yes, it'll be too vague. Would you tell Jessica I love her? She didn't really know me that well, but I did love her. And also... There's a hard drive in the bottom drawer of my drinks cabinet. Please destroy it. Please don't look at it. I will consider your request. <clears throat> yes, I will consider it. Perhaps Jaya would be able to assist me in this matter, but don't worry. Do not think things that are so outlandish the military wanting to take you and kill you I don't think so um there's one more thing we can ask here with no hour thank god for that there's someone else in my hour a hooded figure watching me and following me I've followed it too that's what I wanted to say I've Followed it. Maybe let's try you. You've followed it too. Is that supposed to mean something? <laughs> um, if that was an achievement for totally getting it wrong repeatedly, then yes, thank you. I earned that. Absolutely. Um, let's try just followed it too. Or let's just try followed it. That means nothing to me. Yes, yes Vienna. Vienna. <laughs> um, I've followed it too. You've followed it too. Let's try followed it too. I don't know. Crap. <sighs> let's try where did you follow it? Whatever it is that's following me, it doesn't want to catch me yet. If I move towards it, it runs away. And when I follow it, I follow it past temptations. A bar brawl, an open till, an open bedroom window. Like, it's testing me. An open window? Like... To a woman's apartment. To Jessica's apartment. I looked in. Watching other people as somehow built into our genes, Doctor. 
There was an old woman in bed. I went inside. Her bed covers were smoking. I think she'd fallen asleep holding a cigarette. I took the covers and put them in the bath. She'd have died otherwise. And no, I didn't take any pictures. <laughs> Fun little fact, the actors are relying on, in order to get their lines memorized, except for um, the actor who played Elin, who we'll meet uh, in the next episode, or re-meet, uh, have her in for her appointment. Anyway, they were using a teleprompter, but they were all very, very good at not moving their eyes along the teleprompter um, to kind of get them, help them along with so much dialogue. Uh, okay, so we have seen enough. Well, I'd like to find out one more thing about Barry David. I'm actually a classically trained pallbearer. There are a lot of health and safety considerations. Not everybody can do it. Well, properly at least. Occasionally I step in if the funeral director is short-shouldered. I do remember her face. She wasn't upset in the usual way. She seemed agitated. Her husband must have been a giant, the coffin was so heavy. I remember because aft port side sprained his ankle. That and he wasn't lifting correctly. Okay, coffin heavy? In simple terms. No. Uh... Okay, so it's actually telling me that I've said all I can really say about Bryce right now, or said to say to him. So we'll check our notes. Uh, let's move on to Mariana. She's wearing a new outfit today. Um, and in the interview, I talked to her about that uh, wonderful necklace that she's wearing. So make sure to check that out when it comes out. Um, okay, Mariana. Let's try saying hello, because I keep forgetting to do that very basic thing. Hello, Mariana. I'm okay. Thanks for asking. It's rent day, and I always feel a little blue on rent day. Rent day? Rent day is the day I pay rent to my landlady. Well, why would you feel blue? I pay my rent to a landlady. I don't own my own place. I'm just passing through. You're passing through from where? I never stay in one town very long. I get bored too easily. Once you've seen the same faces over and over again, you move. Like I said before, I like to move around a lot. Move around a lot? Nope. Nothing. <laughs> By the way, that is not her uh, natural speaking voice. And in order to speak, f hear her real speaking voice, I've already said it a hundred times. Okay, so let's ask her about Bryce. You're not getting it. <laughs> or not. Um, let's check here. The rest Claire killed David... Um, ask patients about the paper spike. Okay. So we have to remember to ask each person about the paper spike, and I'll, oh, I'll also ask her about Scarlet. Dr. Decker used to put my checks on that thing. I guess someone thought they weren't getting value for money. <laughs> I actually don't have a lot of money. Sometimes a therapy check would bounce, but Dr. Decker would be okay with it. Oh, my checks are fine, though. Don't worry. Mm. You don't have a lot of money. I'm not broke. Men buy me drinks at bars, though. Sometimes I'll get away with not paying at restaurants. Isn't that how it is for everybody? No, I must say that it is not. <laughs> Generally, one is expected to pay. Do men pay for you at these restaurants? I mainly like drive throughs I don't like crowds, and I find it difficult to stay in the same place for too long. I guess I'm a fidget. A fidget. <laughs> Passing through, okay. So, um... I mainly like drive throughs 
I don't like crowds. Crowds, and Scott. I find it difficult to stay in the same place for too long. I guess I'm a fidget. So you like, you don't like crowds. Is that why you work, are always so solitary on the beach? Crowds at nightclubs and bars are different. The lights are dim. You can slink around without attracting too much attention. I can imagine that attracting too much attention is a problem that you have experienced before. Sometimes I'll kiss a guy in a club, and then he just follows me wherever I go. It's creepy. I don't want everyone seeing that. Has anyone followed you too much to the wrong place, to your home? They follow me wherever I go. Anywhere. Where do you think they follow me, Doctor? I'm concerned about your safety, Marion. Uh, we have a note come up here. Uh, what happens after they follow you? It depends where they follow me. If they follow me home, they bang on the door for an hour or so, then leave. Other places, they just disappear. I don't see them again. You mean disappear like slip around a corner, or do you mean just appear from the spot where they're standing? Well, they don't just disappear into thin air. I think ah. they return to the place I found them. But I've not run into the same person twice. Marianne, I'm going to give you a uh, an exercise. This exercise is to... The next time you feel the urge to kiss a man that you do not know, or even one that you do, at a club, resist that urge, go home, take two aspirin, and call me in the morning. That's it for your session today, Mariana. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so... <laughs> we, um... Oh, and we got, well... Professor Orange was a uh, Professor Orange. <laughs> Professor Warwick was already orange. Um, within each act, we'll have an opportunity to just for fun to work with smaller cases that are not connected to Dr. Decker. So we're going to head out here. Um, and this, by the way, this actress is Ashlyn Dayath, who is one of the people I interviewed. So you'll get to find out more about her as well in that interview. Let's head out to the main menu. So that I might say to you that I am so glad you joined me today. Wow, we started off as like, we've just made 6% progress. I feel so depressed. <laughs> that was like so much. That was like 40 minutes of work for 6% progress. Gosh, this game makes you work for it. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad you joined me for another episode of Dr. Decker. Many of you are enjoying this game, loving this game. And I am so glad to hear it. Um, and I think it was Vanya in the comments who said, this is getting freaky fast. And that is, that is definitely the way that I would describe it. Freaky. Very quickly going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed what you saw, please hit the thumbs up button below. And if you loved it, join the party and subscribe. I'll see you back here in the crazy world for more infectious madness in the crazy world of Dr. Leslie. And as always, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>